All right, let's look at these three properties to do these six problems. For this one, a to the zero. Whenever you take something to the zero power, the answer is one. We'll show you in the future where that comes from, but for now you just gotta trust me. A to the zero is one. Now, a to the negative powers, if you have any kind of negative power, what a negative power means basically is that you flip it. You drop the negative and you flip it. And you now have one over a to the nth. Now, if the negative is on the bottom, and I want it to be a positive exponent, you basically, instead of being at the bottom, you flip it to the top. So your answer is simply going to be a to the nth, because you, this goes then to the top. Here, because it's negative, it goes to the bottom and becomes positive. Basically, you don't want negative exponents. You want to get rid of all negative exponents. All right, so let's try some problems. If I have 7 to the negative 1 half, and if I want to solve that, what I'm going to do is I am first going to do 7 to the negative 1 half, change that to 1 over 7 squared. I use this property right here. Now, from here, it's real simple that would end up being 1 over 49. That's your answer. Remember, all negative powers flip and then drop the negative. OK, 12 to the 0. Well, according to this property, anything to 0 is 1. So 12 to the 0 would also be 1. That's it. Another pretty simple problem. All right, <clears throat> this one. Looks like we're going to plug negative 2 in for x. So let's first do that. Negative 2 in for x. Plug this in right here. Now, before we go any farther, let's do what's inside of here. That would be negative 2 minus 1 be negative 3. Okie dokie. So we now have negative 3 to the second negative second power. So again, what we talked about earlier is anytime you have a negative power, you flip it. So this is going to be 1 over negative 3 squared. Again, negative powers flip. And then, last step, well, what's negative 3 squared? Or negative 3 times negative 3? Your answer would be 1 over negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 1 over 9. OK. Let's look at number four here. Let's separate this into three different pieces. First of all, five. Well, that's just simply five. All right, a to the zero. Well, a to the zero is, anything to the zero is one. Huh. So this piece right here is just going to be one. And then the last piece, well, b to the negative seventh, according to this property, negative powers flip. So that becomes one over b to the seventh. OK, can we just multiply straight across? Because you kind of you kind of can put a 1 underneath all of these. And 5 times 1 times 1 is 5. 1 times 1 times b to the 7th is b to the 7th. There's your answer. All right, number 5. 3, leave it as 3. x to the 5th doesn't change this x to the 5th. But this negative 1 fourth power, remember you don't want negative powers. And according to this property, if you have a negative power, it drops to the front. It, it, it jumps up top. So basically, this is just going to jump up here. And it's going to be 3x to the fifth. And this jumps up top with it. And you're done. Because you can't combine, combine x to the fifth and y to the fourth. That's simply the answer. And number six here is this whole thing to the 0. Well, kind of funny is this whole thing to the zero doesn't matter what's inside of here. If, because this parenthesis, this whole thing is going to be the zero power. And what we said is anything to the zero power is one. So dumb kind of question, but the answer is simply one. Because this whole thing is to the zero power, so it is one. 